Now, of all the things that Ms. Booker talked about, what would you say was the thing that was most wow to you? I really, you know, I hadn't even started to think this way. Go ahead, Jay. Well, I think the thing that was most, like, they had me like, wow, is when, like, we had the Christiana Care Hospitals, like, hospital nurse come in mm -hmm. and teach us about the trauma unit. Okay. Because, like, they taught us stuff that we don't know, like, how the gunshot wounds and, like, because we hear about it, but we don't know, like, what's really going on in the hospitals. They told us the, like, the procedures that's going on and, like, because I want to be a nurse and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I want to deal with that. But okay. Yeah, yeah. What about for the rest of you? What was a very impactful time that you can think of? Anything? Ashley, what about you? Um, they showed us a film of a, like a group of friends and this boy, he basically made a bad decision by, about joining gangs. So what happened was the boy, he ended up getting shot and dying. So like, I thought this is really happening mm -hmm. in life and that really hit me. Like the film really encouraged me to like stay in the group and stay with my friends and be, not be in the streets. Right. I, I uh, that sounds like, Naisha, what's in your book? Um, I see yeah. you, some of you have little notebooks. Um. <laughs> Um, in my book, um, on Mondays we do things with the cosmetologist that teaches us how to do hair, and we um, take notes. Okay. And before we start, we write down our psalms. So it's just like notes on like what she uses and like how to take care of your hair. That's you know. Go ahead. I was going to ask her what psalm did she have for that actual day? Oh, it was Psalms 139:14, and it says, "I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made." Now, do you pick the scripture for the? Now, actually, um, the the young lady that that does that class, she picks out the the uh, scriptures. But we pray before we start, and we pray when we end, mm -hmm. because it's everything that I do that is good. I do in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and um, I want to put that in. I, I don't want to teach people religion, but I'm gonna live my life out in right. front of you, so you see, you'll see the God in me, and you'll see God shining out through me. So the God in me wants them to be the best women that they can be in life, because I I, I, I live on 23rd Street, and um, I see a lot of my sisters that's not doing too good, and some of them are struggling, and some of them is just they just getting ahead. But I want them to live prosperously the way how God intended us to live. You know, God didn't intend that for us to be on corners and selling each other's poison, and he didn't intend on us selling our bodies and, to get those drugs. So I, 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 I can't stand the enemy, mm -hmm. and I don't mind him knowing that I, mm -hmm. I can't stand him. And I, I'm, I just want them to live the best life that they can live. You know, God said that God said that he would be our strong tower, that he would lead us in the paths of righteousness. And I want them to be, I want them, put them on that right path so he can lead them in that path because the path of destruction, which the enemy, the enemy is leading them to, is leading them to Death. eternal mm -hmm. damnation. Yep. And I want, the, I want to see all my people when I go to heaven. When I go to heaven, I'm going to be looking for you. Maybe I'll go before you. I'm not rushing you. I'm not rushing me. <laughs> <laughs> But I just, I want the best for them, you know? And my sisters, you know, that, that, that lives around me, they are some beautiful women, and nobody really takes the time out to even talk to them or takes the time out to try to help them. You know, it's a lot of people that have a lot of different programs out here that's getting all this money, and they brag on how long they've been doing this and doing that, and they should actually be ashamed of themselves. Right. When you look at the conditions of our people, and you see that they're not going anywhere, and you talk about you've been doing something for 25 years, what are you doing with the money? Right. I mean, it, you could take, this little, I gotta tell a story. Um, young lady, her name is Butterbean. I don't even know her real name. <laughs> but it was a little boy that lives around us, and he didn't have sneakers and clothes, and she called my husband and barked to her house three pairs of brand new sneakers 
of Air Jordans and uh, I don't even know the name of these sneaks Kitties. that's out. And she bought that and they bought clothes. And if you could have seen the smile and the happiness that little boy showed, I'm getting ready to cry because just a little, you don't know, just a little bit can help somebody. Mm -hmm. Now that boy won't be teased. And, and then that's another thing that I teach them. I teach them empathy because it's a lot of bullying going on in school. And, and because his parents can't afford the things that the other guys wear, that's, they bully them and then that's what make them want to sell drugs because they want to have the things that they have. Mm -hmm. But if you could just, just, just donate some time, just donate a, a pair of sneakers, some pants or something to these kids. You, I, I'm telling you, these kids, they are, ve they are very, very appreciative of what you give them. And the sisters that's around there, they are very appreciative of what I give them because people donate to me. I put them out in front of my house and they say, oh, you are a blessing. No, we have to be a blessing to the people that are less fortunate than we are. And that's even with the information that they have. We need to give them the information that they need in order to be successful, to come up out of the, the, the rut that they're in. You know, as far as jobs, you could go here and you could get training. You could go here and you could get, get your teeth fixed if the smile is not too cute. You could go here for help with food and clothes and rent and, you know, just give a, a lending hand. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm teaching these young ladies. I'm teaching them how to help people to reach back and, and, you know, and help people the way, same way God picked you up and helped you, the same way your parents taught you, the same thing you give back to them. How yeah. about you, Mr. Booker? As the bodyguard, was there anything you wanted to share? Uh, I wanted to share, uh, you should have been there with the barbecue chicken, the macaroni and cheese, <laughs> and the cabbage. And they said, keep going. I said, no, nah, I'm going to eat up all the food. But they encouraged me to eat, and I like to eat, so I ate it. <laughs> but the, the real reason why I came on this show was basically to uh, sit with my youngest daughter because she gets a little nervous on TV. But I said, I want to take the opportunity to talk about the prison program that I have concerning the Stop the Violence Prayer Chain also. And I, we, we switched the name of it to The Bridge due to the fact that uh, Herman Holloway was the first person to make a donation to, to our organization concerning that. So I said, my wife is from Southbridge, Herman Holloway is from Southbridge, so we'll just call it the bridge. And what the bridge does, it's the bridge from the prison to the streets, from the streets to the prisons. And you know, a lot of people are, that are locked up, women also, it's not just for brothers, it's brothers and sisters who are locked up, locked up in their, um, they're not as fortunate as others to have money on the books for, uh, to, for people to uh, get the information to their loved ones or, they, or their loved ones even to go visit them. And what, what I'm going to do, and by the grace of God, is provide uh, transportation, financial commissary, pictures so they can see their loved ones growing up, you know, and it don't take that much of a picture with a phone right. and getting commissary from people so it will be documented and you don't have to worry about is the money going to the certain place because every time I take a donation, I'll have a photo from that person. Not handing me money, but right there on the spot. Even their loved ones, um, you know, taking them to go see them. They might be in Virginia, they might be in Philadelphia, they might be in New York, and they might can't visit them. But what we're going to do is we're going to provide transportation for them. That's the bridge you know, over troubled waters because a bridge is the connection to the other side. And in between that, in between that bridge is a lot of waters. And those waters are troubled. You know, they get deep sometimes right. and we can't swim them. But with the, uh, with the bridge, we cancel all that troubled water just like God is a bridge, you know what I mean? And that's what we're doing, the work of the Lord, because in the Bible says, I was in prison, did you come visit me? That's the work of the Lord, you know what I mean? So that's what... That's what I, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I don't want to keep saying that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to, that's what I'm doing. But the thing about it is, too, we need donations because my legs are not really under me, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, we just, we're getting up and running. <laughs> but like my wife said, it's been, it's people who've been in this thing for 25 years, and the city is what it looks like, 25 years of nothing. Right. I'm going to mm -hmm. call it is what it is because the ace is the ace and the spade is a spade. They keep getting the money, all the money that's donated. It's millions of dollars out here, but we don't see it. Even more, your academy, which they want to shut down, is for troubled youth. Now, you want to shut something down that the other kids can't even go to school at Christiana High School or Brandywine because they're so troubled. 
So if you're going to say they're troubled kids, then let's let's take Maury and make it a trouble troublesome school for troublesome kids. Mm. You know what I mean? Why are we shutting that down in our neighborhood? Now those same kids are going to go to Brandywine, Christiane, and Newark, Dickinson, and get kicked out. Where are they going to go after that? Right. They're going to go right to the streets. Mm -hmm. They're going to start hustling. And like you said, they see the drug dealer, so that's what their role model is. But I try to be the role model that they can see living a godly life before them. I don't even speak to them that much, but I always demonstrate my life before them. Yes. And I'm talking about prison, those same young brothers that's getting kicked out of Moria and Dickinson and everything, what do you think they're taking polls for, the census? They're taking census to see how many prisons should we build? How many brothers and sisters getting kicked out of school? How many liquor stores do we need to put on the corner? That's the reason why they come in our neighborhoods and count us. So to prevent, even in the prison, I don't want to say prevent, because this, this is, but while they're in prison, it is beautiful to build a bond up with a brother or sister that's in prison who, who doesn't have anything. There is, there, is, there is a certain unique bond that's built right there and when they get out, it's easier for them to listen to me versus somebody else. The job they get out, then when they get out, might be 775 minimum wage at McDonald's, but it might be another job that's paying 775. But because you know we built up a bond, I said, "Yo, brother, man, you need to take that gig at 775." And he said, "You know what, man? We're gonna walk with you because we walk with you in prison. We know it's something better on the other end of this. You ain't just sugarcoating nothing, selling us no dream." Right. So the prison ministry is very real, and I know I don't want to keep taking up. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Um, yes, Michelle, is there anything else you wanted to do? Your phone number has been up so people know how to get in touch with you. Oh, is yeah. the program still open for people who might want their young daughters to join? And it is. It's open. Uh, we meet every Wednesday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So uh, we start from 5 and we're done by 7, 7.30, something like that. Now on Fridays we go a little longer because of our bond that we have. and. What we do is, this is a sisterhood, and, and it's no separation of any of these girls that's in here. And, and they know I don't play nobody, making fun of nobody and none of that. They know I don't play like that. But um, it's still open. And also, uh, my uh, program for girls ages five, I'm so excited, ages <laughs> five to 12, all things girly. And what we're going to do with them, we're going to teach them etiquette through storytelling, and art. Anything that you can think of that's girly, we will be doing for uh, makeup. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to teach them, uh, you know, uh, how to, we're going to do the tea sets and, and we're going to do all kinds of arts and crafts. On our you first day, that. actually, on our first day, we'll be doing girly gloss. We're going to teach them how to make their own lip gloss and we're going to make um, have them making gifts for their mother because Mother's Day is coming mm -hmm. up and I'm not going to tell what we're going to make, but I have a lot, and everybody that I use is professional. I wanted this to, to add that in. Everybody that teaches them and interacts with them are professionals, and I, it's not me that's teaching them these things. You know, like I always say, much as I think I know everything, I do not. I do not. But um, I have all professionals coming in. I have professional artists coming in that's going to teach them all kinds of art, how to do all kinds of artwork and just all, everything you can think of that's girly and glittery and just. They'll love that. Yes, they and I'm a girly girl too. I'm a girly girl like you, yes, you're a girly I'm girl. I'm a girly girl. So I definitely would like for you to come and speak to them Yeah, too. we'll definitely talk a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But ladies, I wanna thank you all very, very much for coming. And I know I said this in the back and I can even say it with more surety now, you guys did a really good job. I'm very, I mean, you spoke beautifully and you presented yourself and nobody sat there shy. <laughs> so you did a really good job and um, hopefully I'll see you soon. Yes. yes. Could yes. I just uh, chime in? Hello. When did home. you sneak in here? <laughs> <laughs> I studied your moves from uh, the past. I said, uh, what would Shauna do? Mm -hmm. and, and so listen, this was a powerful, powerful panel here tonight. And the reason why I came back is I just want to also weigh in and congratulate you guys Number one, for um, having the courage to step out on your faith and form this group together yes. and share it with one another. Um, and, and the skills that you're being taught are so important. Um, important. And the qualities that you already possess, um, your compassion. Um, I think you guys are in great hands with McKeeb and Michelle. Yes. Um, they, they are definitely doing the Lord's work, as are you. And I just wanted to say thank you for coming on the program.
Oh, thank you. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you. So what did you, what do you want to talk about? No, that was, that was basically that was it. it. Well, I mean, we can keep going. Why don't we just keep this going? You guys, can you stay with us? Yes, oh. we can. Let's, let's keep going. Okay, did you have any questions that I didn't cover? No, man, you never cover, I mean, you never <laughs> miss covering anything. Like I said, it, it's the spirit and, and there's, there's attraction in this. And even I felt it. I'm, I'm sitting off camera, mm -hmm. but the attraction of, and the dynamic of what you're doing pulled me in and made me want to become a part of this conversation so that I can understand the attraction that made you want to become a part of the group. Right, and, and, and plus, um, McKeeb gave me courage. <laughs> I to mean, come in. I said, listen, <laughs> if McKeeb can panel. sit there <laughs> on a panel discussion title, All Things Girl, <laughs> I can stop running because I ran, y'all, at home. I, he was, I, like, I was like, I'm out. <laughs> but, but when I saw my brother sitting there standing tall, I said, you know what, I'm joining. So I'm here. You know go ahead, they say, oh, go ahead. Real, you know they say only real men can wear pink. Right. Right. That's right. That's Naisha, right. did you have something you wanted to say? You look like you had a little statement on your face. Yeah. No, you good? <laughs> now, will mm. these, the life skills girls, be helping out with all things girly at all? Yes, they will. Um, well, the grand opening, I call it the grand opening. I'm so excited again. It's April the 4th. Uh, Wilmington Library, across from Rodney Square on 10th Street, uh, 11 o'clock. Now, we're out from 11 to 3. That'll be every Saturday at the Wilmington Library. And uh, we're, we're going to serve them lunch. I'm going to teach them to eat healthy. And while I'm teaching them to eat healthy, I'm going to teach myself. <laughs> okay. But uh, we're going to have a salad bar for them. And, um, you know, it's going to be really nice. And um, I do have candy, but it's sugar-free mm -hmm. candy. I really didn't want them to know because I'm going to make this glittery table up with all <coughs> these candy everywhere, but every last piece of it is going to be sugar-free because I'm not dealing with nobody's five-year-old child that's on sugar. Right. I'm, right not going right. That. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But um, it's just all in fun. I have a ventriloquist coming in, uh, and the doll's name is Susie. I can't wait for, you, for everybody to meet Susie, and she is great. Um, I have different people coming in to speak to them about different things. And like I said, we're going to do our little artwork and our, our glam gloss, and I just can't wait to work with these little girls. It, I sound, can't it wait. sounds like it's going to be really wait. wonderful. It yeah, is. Yeah. It is. And um. Uh, my my um, my daughters. I hope everybody will be there to help me with this because <laughs> I'm going to need help. And please pray for me. Amen. If you out there listening, please pray for me. Amen. But God has given me a work to do, and I'm going to be obedient, and I'm going to do God's work. I'm going to do what He has me to do, and I'm going to get in position. Yeah. so that I can catch every last blessing that he has. Yeah. And you yeah. know what God said. God said when you're blessed, everybody around you is blessed. Yeah. Yeah. So let's sprinkle the blessings all over the city of Wilmington and see if we can bring them rebirth. I want to rebirth Wilmington. Yeah. You know, I want to take them back, take them back and, and, and teach them the, the things that we learn. Because I'm, I'm from South Bridge. And South Bridge is a family-oriented side of town, I'll tell you, uh, the Olivers and the Perkins and different people, um, it was like a village. Mm -hmm. And we, t we, our parents taught us manners and taught us, you know, everything that we needed to know. But if we go outside the box, when we was outside, they corrected us. Right. So, you know, it's just, it, South, I love Southbridge. I really do. And it's still that kind of, it, when you go over Southbridge, it's like a whole nother little town over there. And not taking nothing away from east side <laughs> and west side and, and, and the north side. <laughs> okay, because you're from over north side. North side. Okay. No, I'm not okay. taking anything away from them. I'm just going about telling them about my childhood experiences. That's all. Yeah. Okay, so, go ahead. Well, like I said, um, number one, I mean, the, there's, there's power in numbers and and you know you young ladies um i'm sure you're growing from being together you know drawing strength from one another getting um support and ideals from each other you know that's that's very powerful and do not be surprised um if people sometimes as we say quote unquote at first may hate on you oh, yeah. and try to discourage you from what you're doing you know 
Uh uh, don't fall for that. That's a trick of, of, of the enemy, and it's nothing personal against the peers. They just may not know. And eventually, some of the people that you may run into, if you happen to, they will come around, and later on, you'll find that they'll, they'll want to become a part of it as well. So you are pioneers, and, and um, I, I'm excited. And, and the young, young fellows also, we need, we need our young fellows to, to band together as well. And, and as McKeeb was saying, thank God that there are still men in the, in the neighborhood mm -hmm. who are living examples. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not media created. Right. Real examples. Right. Real, examples. Real examples. Invested there, lived there, from there. Mm -hmm. I'm from there, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you speak about South Side, yep, lived over South Side. Mm -hmm. West Side, yep, lived over West Side. North Side, yep, did some North Side. You know, East Side, yep. You really? Know, you lived in all those places? All of those places. Um, wow. And I came up during the, the same time mm -hmm. when you would be corrected by any of the elders. Any of them. And any of the you elders. elders out there, listen, you blessed us. Yes. This, this generation was truly, truly blessed. Yes. Um, and, and as Michelle was saying, we're giving it back. We're giving it back. And, and, and if, if you don't want to be a part of that, cool. Do you. But you got to move out of right. the way.